Hi, this is Agnes Berengeri de Harana, and I'm here to talk about um, stitches that were used in the SCA period so that you can definitely get a chance to really focus on your stitching. And um, hopefully you can see these because I always have problems with focusing and trying to get everything to work the way I want them to. <gasps> But let's get started real quickly. Um, I'm not teaching you the how to do the stitches. Those will be later videos. I'm just talking about the actual stitches themselves. And we're going to try to do these as quickly as possible. Um, so our first stitch is the stem stitch. And hopefully you can see the little roping. It looks like a little rope. Um, that stitch goes back to like the first and second centuries BC. We have an extant piece of Hellenistic embroidery that shows us this. Um, and so that we know that this is probably one of our oldest stitches. It's also a very fun one if you do a lot of Opus Anglicanum. It works beautifully with the nap of silk and silk wannabes like DMC uh, floss. Then we have, um, I'm going to come down to this one, which is chain stitch. Um, chain stitch, uh, and let me kind of give you, there we go. Maybe that'll help a bit. There we go. Chain stitch is a wonderful um, stitch for doing all kinds of outlining work and things like that. You can use thin threads, thick threads. Um, there's a reverse chain stitch. And when we go to, you know, which is similar, um, I mean, it looks the same. It's just how it's done is a little bit differently but uh we this goes back to about the fourth or fifth century um we know that there there's extant persian embroideries that use chain stitch and a chain stitch is still very popular in the middle east um as well as in india and in india they in the by the 17th century, they're using tambour work to create this chain stitch. Instead of um, using plying a needle, they actually use a tambour needle, which picks up the thread and, and pulls it through. So um, it's kind of a cool stitch to have, and it's a very handy one for filling and lining and doing all kinds of different things with it. Then we have um, here, we have split stitch. Um, and it, and in, in some ways they look alike, but they, they actually work differently and they are very different in how they're stitched. Um, but this one, we know that they were using it uh, in the 10th century, you know, probably earlier, but we know definitely 10th century because of uh, the Cathedral of Durham in England uses it. So that's something to be aware of. Then here... Now we go to black work, okay? That's what people call it generally when they're talking about it is black work. Um, however, there are other terms for it also. The stitch itself is called double running stitch. Um, if we look over here, real, let me see if I can spread this out a bit. You'll see running stitch. Running stitch is a base, is probably one of the oldest stitches in mankind, but as a decorative stitch, who knows how long they've used it. However, it's basically in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. And double running is you go back and you fill in these, uh, the, the, um, the spots where the thread is underneath. Sorry for the shaking. Um, the, so once you've done this, you go back and there's patterns that you can do. Um, black work is, you know, is very, it's one of those that if you really have, um, it, it's kind of like modern cross stitch. Um, it's something that can be done with a chart easily. It can be charted and, and easily stitched with a chart. Um, so if you want to do counted work, this is a good one for counted work. Um, it's great as a, um, it's a great stitch for decorating your cuffs and, you know, for cuffs and around necklines and things like that. Um, it was used in, by the, as, you know, we know that, um, definitely used in the 15th or in the 16th century by the English. But prior to that, um, it was being used in Spain, and the Spanish got it from the Moors. So, or what is now known as Spain. Back then, it was just a bunch of uh, principalities, counties, and so forth. Just like almost most uh, um, 
most Euro European countries of the time. Um, so that's a good one for that. Uh, we have our buttonhole and then blanket stitch. These two are kind of stitched the same, but how they're used is very different. Um, you see here the the bumpy part is on the outside. That's you know where the stitch is finished. And this is the side that you would use in for the hole itself, for the buttonhole. Um, this blanket stitch, you're actually putting the bumpy part on the outside. So it's, a, it's for binding edges of fabric. Um, and it's really kind of a cool stitch to use for like, I use it in, um, I'm going to just shift this a bit. So there's your warning. Um, I use it for uh, finishing off pouches and things like that, that I want to just kind of give that decorative edge to. Um, so that's that one. Then here we've got a Van Dyke stitch, uh, which some folks feel is definitely a stitch that would have been used in the Viking era. So it's a good one to, to have in your repertoire. Um, we have over here, we have the herringbone stitch. I'm covering up the nasty part so you can see the pretty part. Um, that's what samplers are for. They're to, to help you practice and, and kind of get used to what you're dealing with. Um, but this is another one that Viking era, uh, or, you know, what we call Viking era, um, Scandinavian personas like to use for decorating apron dresses and tunics and so forth. Okay. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice looking stitch, especially when done small. This one is, looks, you know, just gives your seam treatments, just a really lovely look to them. Now, a very important, um, stitch for the period is our couching stitch. Uh, the couching stitch goes straight across. Um, the gold, you can see kind of the gold, um, it goes straight across. Okay, it's just laid on the fabric and then we're taking little tiny stitches over it to stitch it down. And these, these, this was worked very, I mean, it was very clever in how it was worked. Um, generally, it's used in gold work, uh, Opus Anglicanum or Noe, um, any of the fancy ecclesiastical stuff. Um, you'll often see this type of stitching. I know some people are sitting there going, but you just one line, I don't understand. Um, it, the, the way they could use it, um, couching, this is just basic. This is the basic of couching. Beyond that, you know, because if you have a cord, you know, you got a big heavy gold cord, you can't just stick it into your fabric in and out, in and out, in and out. You're going to destroy the gold cord. Um, so when you, and, and the use of the gold cord is the patterning. So you're going to just put it down, lay it down on your pattern, and then you're going to tack it down where, you know, periodically. Um, you can use the same color thread or you can use different color threads. And that's the beauty of um, couching is you can use a whole variety of patterns, um, you know, colors of thread and so on and so forth. Now over here, here we have a variety of different variations on the couching. We've got um, the most common and popular, let's see if I can get a good, nice little looky-loo on that one. I don't know. Um, hopefully you can see that this pattern ha is called a, um, this is your, what people like to call the bayou stitch. Okay. Um, it's laid in couch work. Okay. You are laying down a bunch of threads vertically, and then you're putting, laying another thread over and couching that thread down. Okay. Um, and this was used on the infamous or the famous uh, Bayou Tapestry, which is not a tapestry. It's an embroidery, uh, but people call it a tapestry because it's up there and, and uh, it is a wall hanging. And that's important to remember that the Bayou Tapestry is a wall hanging. It's not getting a lot of stress on the threads. Um, this is not a stitch. This stitch here is not a stitch you want to use on cushions, pillows, or anything like that that's going to take stress, okay? If your butt, your knees, 
your feet, anything are going to be on that pillow or on it, you don't want to use it, okay? Um, it is a pretty stitch, and it makes lovely rondelles and things uh, placed on a, on a skirt or a tunic in areas that aren't taking stress. It is a wonderful stitch for that kind of stuff. But don't put it on a, on a kneeling cushion. That's, that's going to take a lot of wear and tear. Okay, so that's my, that's my soapbox, as uh, Duchess Helga likes to say. That's my soapbox. Don't, you, you know, know your stitches. Um, you have other stitches that are far more secure. You have, these ones are always much better stitches for those, for those, those um, pillows and things that you want to use. So that is our class on, today on period stitches. There are more, there are a whole bunch more, but I don't want to make this too long. So have a good day.